Hi guys, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So here we are again with yet another handheld radio released from Biofeng, and this time it's called a UV32. Now it costs around £30 at the time of making this video, and according to the specification, it can output up to 10 watts of RF power. Now we've all seen those claims before. Now of course, later in the video, we will test that theory along with testing the airband AM reception and any spurious emissions. The specifications state this chunky handheld can pretty much operate on three handbands, those being the two meter band, the 1.25 meter band for countries that use that frequency range, and of course the 70 centimeter band. It does also receive and transmit out of those bands, so using it on GMRS or UK PMR is possible, even though it's not exactly legal to do so. Now the UV32 features USB-C charging and it also supports Bluetooth programming, but more on that shortly. Now the battery is rather interesting in terms of its shape and design. Don't think I've seen a battery like this before. Now apparently it does have a capacity of 2500 milliamp hour, providing 8.4 volts, which is actually a little higher than I've seen previously on other batteries. Maybe this slightly higher voltage is to help with the supposed 10 watts of RF output. The USB-C port is located at the bottom, which can be used to charge the battery for multiple types of USB-C adapters. Now the screw at the base is to actually hold that battery into the radio. Now here is another first, a belt pouch. Yep, it's an actual pouch that you can attach to your belt and the radio can sit inside this pouch. Now we'll see later how well this fits. There is an included wall outlet power supply, which provides five volt at one amp. Now this can be used directly plugged into the battery or plugged into the supply charging cradle. Now the included antenna is proper stiff with not really that much flex on it. Although the bottom is stated to support between 136 to 174 megahertz and then 400 to 420 megahertz. Now I would take that with a pinch of salt as I very much doubt it's that broad banded. And lastly, well, we have the radio itself. Now, just below the keypad, you'll notice a very small hole. Well, that is where the microphone is located. The speaker, however, is located in a place that I was not expecting it to be. The UV32 has a two inch color display and down the right side, we find regular speaker mic sockets, which of course can be used with an appropriate programming cable. Down the left side, we have the usual PTT and two user programmable function keys. On the top, we find the antenna socket and two rate tree controls, one of which is for memory change or frequency change, and the other controls power on and off or volume control. You will also notice that on the top, GPS has been carved into the body. Yep, this has a GPS receiver built in. I will admit though that the buttons do feel kind of okay. They have a rubberized feel to them, so it's pretty comfy. Now on the rear towards the top of the radio is actually where we find the audio output speaker. And then below this, well, this is where the included battery attaches to. As mentioned earlier, the battery needs to be screwed in to keep it in place. With the battery and antenna attached, it's definitely one of the largest or longest handheld radios that I've taken a look at. Turning the radio on, you're presented with the official Baofeng startup logo, and then pretty quickly it boots into radio mode. Two VFOs, although it does not support full duplex, which is a shame. You can turn on dual watch within the menu, but again, it only receives one at a time. You will notice on the screen the word zone one under the frequency. Now this is because the UV32 can have up to 10 banks of memories, which they call zones. Now that's useful if you want to group together certain memories, like local repeaters or repeaters, say like at your holiday home, for example. Now the menu system is different to what I've seen before, although it's actually pretty easy to navigate and find the settings that you're looking for. The first settings I always turn off on these types of radios are the beeps and the voice prompts, which is a synthesized voice which tells you what you've just performed on the radio. I also like to make sure that LCD backlight stays on all the time, and this is also easily changed within the menu system. GPS can also be enabled or disabled through the menu. Apart from showing your current latitude and longitude and altitude and being able to store around 10 waypoints, that's about as useful as the inbuilt GPS gets. Now I've seen GPS features like this added to radios like this in the past. 
And if they are still adding this feature, then surely someone somewhere must be using it. Now let me know in the comments if you use this limited GPS feature in your radio and what you use it for. Adding APRS transmissions would have been a lot more beneficial, especially for the ham radio market. The UV32 does have a nice range of step sizes, meaning support for UK PMR with 6.25 kHz steps is actually possible. Now some radios are a complete nightmare and fiddly to create a memory channel, actually on the radio itself without a computer. However, the UV32 actually provides a way to easily add a channel through the radio itself. You simply go through each of the programming channel options to set the values. You can even add an alpha tag to that memory channel. So well done Bafeng on this brilliant feature. As mentioned earlier, the audio output speaker is on the back of this radio. And to be honest, it actually sounds really good. Take a listen to this. It'll fly a helicopter out here pretty regularly, the police, but uh, I don't think they ever, they ever bother. They probably know who these guys are. They could probably go down and knock their doors, but uh, they don't bother from GW0 TAU. Fine on that. Yeah, it's uh, just one of those things, as I say, with the cars. So that was just listening to my all-star node with a mixture of analog and digital transmissions going through Hubnet. So let's just take a quick listen to hear how the transmitted audio sounds coming out of the UV32. This is uh, M0 DQW testing, M0 Delta Quebec Whiskey, testing the audio on the Baofeng UV32, M0 DQW testing, audio on the Baofeng UV32 Pro, M0 DQW over. So not bad, sounds pretty decent to me, especially to my old ears. Now programming the radio can be performed in a few different ways. We saw a moment ago that we can actually program any memories through the radio itself. Now next would be to use the official Windows application for this. Of course, you will need a programming cable, something which wasn't actually included in the box. The official CPS is okay, but there is actually a better way. And for those of you that do not use Windows, you can use the multi-platform programming application called Chirp. Now there's currently no official UV32 support, but you can select the UV17 Pro GPS model from the drop-down list of devices. Now this appears to work well in both reading and writing memories and settings to and from the radio via Chirp. Now I do like Chirp and I've mentioned it many times before and that's because it incorporates Repeaterbook which makes it easy to import local repeaters to your memory list. Now this saves so much time and programming in each repeater line by line, so you just don't have to do that anymore. You simply perform a proximity search and then copy and paste your required repeaters to the radio memory list. You can also adjust radio settings from within Chirp, but it doesn't appear to have full bank or zone support yet. Well, at least for this radio. So you may have to perform zone and bank editing on the official programming software if you want to use zones or banks. Now the last way in which you can program the radio is via Bluetooth. Just make sure Bluetooth is enabled within the radio's menus and then you can use the radio programming application. Now I did try the iOS version of this app first, but for some reason it failed when trying to read the radio's programming data back to the phone. However, I did try the Android version and this works perfectly. Now, while I think programming a radio from scratch using this application would be cumbersome, it can be very useful for quickly adding a single channel or even editing an existing one. So it's definitely useful. It also means that if you need to do something like this and you're out in the field and don't have access to a computer, then you can just quickly use your phone. Now, according to the specification, the UV32 can receive airband using AM. However, personally, I was a little disappointed with its performance. So take a listen to this and let me know what you think. Now at the start of this video, I showed you that little belt pouch that comes in the box. Well, this is how it fits together with the radio. Now, if you're the type of person that likes to put your handheld radio on your belt, then you may find this useful. It's definitely a snug fit and using those two elasticated parts will keep the radio in its place until you want to remove it. Now, I guess you could also just leave it in the pouch on your belt and just use a speaker mic instead. 
Okay, so now it's time to test the RF output levels. Up on 145 megahertz with low power set on the radio, we see an output of around three watts. On middle power, we see an output of around 6.5 watts. And then on high power, we see an RF output of just over nine watts. So that's not bad at all. Taking into account that I'm using a fairly cheap power meter and also losses in any of the cables used, that's pretty close to the specified 10 watts. So let's now take a look at the 70 centimeter band at 435 megahertz. So on low power, we see an output of around 1.6 watts. And then on medium power, we see an output of around 3.5 watts. On high power though, which is the highest available setting, we see an output of around 8.5 watts. Now for those of you interested in the power output on the 1.25 meter band, let's take a look. With the radio set to 220 megahertz, we see an output of around two and a half watts on low power. On medium power, we see around the same output power. And on high power, we see an output of around 3.8 watts. So the power output is definitely way lower on the 1.25 meter band compared to the two and 70 hand bands. So the last test that I like to perform, and yes, I know using a tiny SA Ultra is not lab grade and calibrated to the highest spec possible, it still does provide valuable information. Now what we're looking at here is the radio transmitting at 145 megahertz on low power going through a series of attenuators, just so that the input of the Tiny SA Ultra is not damaged. Now the peak, labelled as one, is the fundamental, and the two is the second harmonic. Now what I'm interested in here is the difference between those two peaks. Now a well-filtered radio should present its second harmonic more than 40 dB lower than that fundamental. Now in this case, with the UV32, this does not appear to be the case, when transmitting on the two meter band. Now up on the 1.25 meter band at around 220 megahertz, any harmonics apart from that fundamental are so low that they're just not reading. Given the noise floor is just below minus 70, it's at least a 60 dB difference. Now considering two meters was so bad, 70 centimeter is actually a surprise, seeing similar results to what we saw on the 1.25 meter band with virtually no nasty harmonics, which are less than a 60 dB difference. Now I'll let you decide if you think these readings are acceptable or not, and if you think it's something that we should worry about. Now I have my own personal opinions on this, and when compared to a top tier radio like Yesu or Icom, nasty out of spec harmonics just don't exist. So should we expect the same for manufacturers like Burfeng, especially on these later radios, where in the past spurious emissions have been really bad? Anyway, guys, let us know what you think about this down in the comments below. I can guarantee I already know what most of you will say, but I'd still like to hear your thoughts. Until the next one, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next video.